Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sharing a Drink with Matt. Today I'm talking to Sydney Ciders Avalanche. Let's do it. Let's do it. You there, fellas? Hey, you there, guys? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hello. Just, How you doing? just waiting for our drummer to join, sorry. That's all right. Did you send him the link? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think he's trying it out now. Yeah, he's just doing it. Yeah, he should be here today. <clears throat> Got to go back to work on a Saturday, mate. Oh man, I've been so I had to take a we had to take a, a pretty much a full week off. Was it last week? Um, we went up to Brisbane for my one of my good mates' weddings. Oh man, and yeah, it's just been nuts ever since I got back. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. Um, I don't know. Do you want to start, and we'll just fill him in yeah. when he gets here. Yeah, yeah, he, I think he's joining up now. Here we go. Okay, he's starting. Have you guys got any albums yeah. coming out yet? <laughs> Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear yeah. me? Yes, there he is. Ah, oh, there he is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, mate. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so I just will say hi. My name's Matt. You guys are? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, my Matt and you are. We're Avalanche. <laughs> <Yeah. We're> Avalanche. <laughs> With, who so, consists of? Who consists of? Uh, so you've got me on lead vocals and uh, bass. Um, Steve. Stephen Campbell. Uh, Veronica Campbell on lead guitar. And I'm Ryan Roma. I play drums. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. So you two, brother and sister, all married? Uh, <laughs> we we got married for two years now. So yeah. we just had our two years. <laughs> I was hoping that because you were just sitting a bit too close for brother and sister, and I thought, fuck, okay. Well, I mean, you can you can you can consider the band kind of a family in a way. Oh, of course, <laughs> all the time, definitely. Um, so where did the name come from? Where did where Avalanche. did that come from? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Avalanche was the name of my father's band back from the seventies. Um, okay. so yeah, he uh, he lived in Melbourne and uh, started a band back then. I think it was around nineteen seventy six. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, kids. Uh, yeah, they uh, they did some pretty cool things. They had a full length LP and uh, a few sort of chart singles from that yeah. uh, from that album. They, and they toured with like ACDC and Culture. Yeah, like, played with some Sky pretty cool Hawks. people. Um, Skyhooks played with. He's played with John Farnham. He's played with. The, and the uh, Masters Apprentices. I've got a actual um, a record that came back came out in 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 the really early eighties. And yeah. it had, I'm, I'm sure Avalanche were on it with Masters Apprentices. Yeah, Probably most were. likely, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure Dad knows um, or at least played with them at some point. The oh, for sure. Well, if, if he was in that era, then he would have played think, with them. I think so. people know Danny yeah. whatever. Um, was that the thing out? Danny Burgess or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So how long have you been together? And not you two, the band. <laughs> yeah, um, well, we started in about uh, 2018. Me and Ryan knew each other from high school. I went to school with his sister and I found out he was playing drums and we both really liked ACDC and we kind of would just get together and jam on ACDC songs and eventually we decided we want to get a band together and it took us a while to find Steve and our guitarist Arthur who was in here today as well. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it started with me and him like <laughs> in high school. Yeah. 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 Excellent. <laughs> Are you going to say something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, me? Oh, yeah. I don't want to be the star of the show. But, um, yeah, uh, it was rough, roughly Veronica and I knew each other. I think it was uh, we met in late 2016. And then we just started playing um, ACDC covers from, like, literally every album, you know. And then we just okay. thought we wanted to decide to start a band, you know. But, yeah. You said exactly what she just said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, something like that. <laughs> to the word. To the word. Um, I, what was this? Is one for each one of you. Um, what was on the stereo when you were growing? What did your parents object you to? Well, I mean, for sure, for me, like a uh, big, big Aussie rock sort of classic Aussie pub rock sort of vibe, you know. Yeah, a lot definitely. of ACC, a lot of um, Billy Thorpe. Um, my mum was a big Eagles fan, so I'd list, we listened to a lot of Eagles as well. So it's a little bit sort of 
out out sort of um not Australian rock, but um but still. Yeah. In excess was a big one as well. We used to love in excess playing that in the car all the time. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah, just a lot of that. Um, when I was a teenager, I loved metal, so I got really into Metallica, Pantera, all that sort of heavier stuff. Yeah, um, always loved Ozzy. Yeah, well, my my dad's name is Elvis, so he always would play a lot of Elvis. And, oh my God, that's mad. <laughs> my grandparents really liked him, so. Yeah, also just also just classic rock. He also liked his like Metallica and Guns N' Roses and Queen. I think so I heard a lot of that. And ACDC, I probably listened to ACDC first from him, and then yeah, it, it all grew from there. So yeah. yeah, that was like um me growing up was just the Donington album actually from ACDC in 1991, and yep. my dad used to play a lot of um Simple Minds. My dad loved Simple Minds, Bee Gees. Wow. Yeah, yep. just all that classic stuff. But, yeah, mainly those three. Yeah. You yeah. guys are young because when I was growing up, I was subjected to ABBA, Rod Stewart, <laughs> um, Racy. Like, I was a, I'm was a, I'm a 70s kid, so, mm. yeah, it's, a, it, it's, it's funny. When my dad used to listen to Metallica, like, Metallica wasn't dad. Metallica. Like, there was no what? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to someone. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. Go away now, love you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. This is what happens when I when I do this. I've got eight kids and they're little fuckers. Wow. I've got a yeah. <laughs> they just they just try and torment me. So. <laughs> You're a busy, That's all right. Um. Well, yeah. Um. Ross, give me some money now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I, so, well, I remember growing up. I just did that trick with that. Sorry, mate. I'm just <laughs> kicking up. You go. Right. Um, yeah, I was just saying, like, Ross Stewart's a funny one for me because I remember growing up and, like, one of the first things I, I'd seen, seen from Ross Stewart growing up was, like, one of his interviews. And I just remember thinking he just looked like a sort of old middle-aged person like my parents, you know. But then yeah. you sort of grow up and you realise, like, who he was and what he did and you're like, whoa, oh, my God. <laughs> but it's just so funny because the different sort of age gap, um, like, the first... Time, time I would have seen him compared to the first time you would have seen him. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I think I was about six when his first album came out. Wow, well, yeah. Wow. So you would have just seen him as that rock star from the beginning. Yeah. Right? See, I was I was lucky too because <laughs> in my my dad was a bad alco and my mum loved music. So mm. when there was big fucking festivals happening, Dad wanted to go because there was alcohol and yeah. mum loved the music because, yes, so we'd always go. Like we went to Circular Key in Sydney in 76, I think it was about <laughs> eight or nine, and um, saw ACDC Bon Scott when? on a raft mm. out on the harbour. Shit. Like we were, it, it was a family day. It was like Channel Seven family day or some some family day. I remember it. I was only yeah, I was only not eight or nine or something. But yeah, we're about talking about you. Um, so what's on the stereo now? Now, uh, well, we, we listen a lot to a lot of like older sort of blues music now. So like we listen to a lot of like Muddy Waters, um, Can't Bobby King, Canned Heat, um, Rolling, Stone. Rolling Stones. Um, it's yeah, it's funny. The older we've gotten, the more softer it's sort of gotten. But it's all still rock, you know. Yeah, At the end of the day, the blues started rock and roll. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just still always listen to ACAC. Oh, for sure. The for new sure. Metallica. The album new Metallica album, album we've been listening to. That album is great. That album is solid. Is solid it? Uh, have you seen the fr the actual cover? The, yes. the other one. Yeah. Yes. What the fuck is that? It's like, different, I, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think, didn't I'm, not, I'm not a Metallica fan, but and I've been told that it sounds like a um, it should have been a just an, a prolonged commercial. That's how <laughs> shit the music is. <laughs> Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't mind it. I thought it was all right. <laughs> was the only thing I'd say was like maybe the songs were just a bit too long because like every song's yeah. on it was like seven, eight minutes long. So after nah. like, I hate it when they do that. Long, you mm. sort of just tune out of it and you're like, yeah. yeah. Just... See, oh. that was that was what was good about them at the beginning. They'd only have one of them. Yeah. Per yeah. album. Yeah. yeah. And 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 as they prolonged, they'll put two in, and then 
And as you say, now every song's 10 minutes long, you yeah, know? Yeah. It does, it, after a while, it starts to get a bit daunting. <laughs> they, they, used to, they used to do more or less, used to do um instrumentals in their earlier days. Now they stopped that completely, you know? Yeah, so definitely. Not, I, I agree with, um, I think I was watching this interview with um, James the other day and he was saying that he thought they should have called the album Lux Eternal, which is the, one of the first songs that they brought out, which I agree. I think that was my favourite song on the new album because it's definitely really? like an older sort of feel, almost that older sort of classic thrash feel. It's like, wow, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of that Guns N' Roses song, Perfect Crime. Like, it has a very similar riff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what are you going to do with rock and roll? There's so many similar riffs and similar progressions and all that. So. Mm. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I think it's your wife. Um, what was your name again? Veronica. Yeah, Veronica. Did you say what um, was on your stereo at the moment? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, just the same so, thing. Oh, yeah, you're together, so the same fucking thing. <laughs> of course, yeah. I always still listen yeah. to ACDC. I have, like, a small vinyl collection, and I play those every now and again. I got, like, some of the classic mm. ACDC ones, like Let There Be Rock, and I got the first press in a high voltage and Back in Black and all that, so I always like listening to those. Mm. Yeah, we've been trying to, like, get the collection up a bit a bit better lately. There's this really awesome record store we found in Redcliffe up in Queensland. Okay. And um, he's a pretty good dude that runs it and he's like done us some pretty good deals. Like, what, what was that one we got? Yeah, he sold, us, he sold us the first pressing of Back in Black for like 40 bucks. Oh, like ridiculous. A lot more yeah. than that. Wow. No. That's mad. Yeah. So you, you'd definitely be a, being the guitarist, you'd definitely be a Matt Taylor fan then, wouldn't you? What was that, sorry? Um, him being the guitarist, he'd be a Matt Taylor fan, like Candy and all that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. As sure, you man. as you were bringing that up, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because sure. that's it. Like I, I think a lot. Like I've interviewed a lot of bands, and a lot of them do say, a lot of the guitarists that uh, when they're jamming a lot, they go bluesy, and yeah. and they listen to a lot of blues. You yeah. know, and I think, I, I think that's perfect. Well, have you ever had have you ever had that head fuck where you've gone, that's it, I don't want to be in a band, this is not for me, fuck it, I'm out of here. <laughs> I think we I probably mean, yeah, all have at some have point. Yeah. 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 100%. <laughs> I'd say it's a pretty natural feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's what I get every time I ask that question. But I mean, like, especially with the kind of music that, like, like with this, you know, like blues, rock and roll, a lot of it is like feel sort of, you know, not necessarily theory, theory or like completely thought out. A lot of it is just sort of that improv sort of feel mm. stuff. So that's kind of probably why it does work that way, especially yeah. um, coming in on an improv jam or whatever, like a blues style is just going to really fit that because it doesn't really matter what you do. And sometimes the wrong notes are actually right notes. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. Oh, sorry, I'm just putting my beer in. That's all right. I've been a fucking thing. Um, <laughs> so everyone everyone said yes to the head fuck. Um, favorite <laughs> venue? Oh. Um, Frankie's Pizza was a great one. It's not. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we played the, one of their birthday gigs, which was pretty cool. And we played, um, you know, Kingswood from Melbourne, they're pretty big Aussie band they're more like indie, but yeah we played like their album launch there we played with the poor there we've played with some pretty cool people there and so that one's mm. we shot mm. one of our videos there as well for Bottle of Sin we just kind of shot our performance and shot our night out basically so it was a very <laughs> fun, fun shoot <laughs> yeah definitely um is are you the are you the same Ryan you yeah that, yeah yeah Frank Frank is always going to remain as the top Always will be. Um, Vanguard's pretty good. Vanguard's yeah, Van- I was just about to say the Vanguard's probably my really favorite. Yeah. yeah. Definitely been sort of our go-to sort of Sydney venue after Frankie's. Yeah. Even Cherry Bar in, uh, in Melbourne too is pretty good. They're great. They've yeah. always treated yeah. us really well. Yeah, they they're all nice. They're all really nice people. And the Duke. There's actually a lot. Yeah, the Duke. Yes. <laughs> Oh, the Tom Cat in Brisbane as well. That's definitely <laughs> the best one we played in Brisbane for me because, that uh, man, that night was just wild, absolutely wild. It's free entry sort of venue and everyone, I don't know if it's just Brisbane or not, but, man, they just seem to go nuts. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think too, but Queensland, especially Brisbane, um, which is coming up to this question, um, there's more punk than metal. Yeah, for sure. Well, like, yeah. when, we, when we first went up there, we um, we, did, we, we played did. with like mostly punk bands. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so Which, yeah, it was definitely yeah. the same punk Yeah. A, a few other rock bands even said to us, like, there's barely any like, rock bands here. I don't know. I think we've only really so, found like two or three bands that really fit like, like our music genre, like with us. Yeah. Well, that fucks that question. <laughs> Which was <laughs> that my next question was going to be because I've, list, I've listened to your stuff. Um, and you've already answered it, so I'll just say it and don't have to answer it. Are you? Um, I've listened to a lot of your stuff. Have you been on many punk bills? Had like, or yeah, sure. yes, yeah. Exactly. It's, like I said, Especially, it was the same yeah. with Sydney. Like yeah. when we first started playing in Sydney for like a good two years, we were pretty much just playing with punk bands, which is great. Yeah. We love punk bands, and like people in punk bands are always the nicest people. Which oh mate, great. it's one big family. I I think more punk than metal is one big family oh for like, sure i mean you know what i mean yeah, they, so many metal elitists that we've met <laughs> yeah yeah definitely with, with our kind of music too like a lot of punk people really get into it whereas yeah yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. we honestly fit like we love playing with punk bands they seem to like us so yeah for sure. yeah, yeah but like if you have a look you like looking in um live footage of that of even metallica you got guys in in the in the pit with mohawks yeah mm. you know what i mean you like there, there's there's not much of a gap really yeah. between metal like you, you're gonna mosh to both you know yeah. a lot you, you, there's gonna be a lot of punk people at a at a metal gig there's gonna be a lot of metal heads at a punk gig and and it's good to to have uh, on a bill, which happens a lot down here in Wollongong, both yeah. punk and metal yeah. on the same bill. But <clears throat> yeah, okay, we got this question. I don't want to get you into trouble, like say you don't miss out on any gigs, but have you got a worse venue? Worse venue. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we can say that one. Kelly's on King in Sydney. They yeah. have a bad reputation. We don't even care mentioning this. They they just treat people like shit. They have a really abusive security force. We uh, are we, we, kind of, we kind of got banned. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can tell me then, yes. We got banned because uh, the guy got upset at us for not signing in. Um <laughs> It was during the pandemic. But it yeah, yeah, I was yeah. sign in for the venues and everything like that. Yeah. So we rocked up at the venue at like five o'clock, like way before he had even started working. Yeah, there was no to load, load all of our Nowhere to stuff sign in. in. And um and the cook apparently just left and didn't show up that day. Yeah. So there was no one serving food. So that was like, after we finished setting all our stuff up, they're like, oh, you can get some food down the street and bring it in. And that's fine. We don't care. And we're like, all right, sweet, we'll do that. And I think you must have seen us coming back in with the food and like, we didn't sign in or anything because we'd already been up and down a few times. Yeah. And we literally came up, like started yelling at us and like all brought us out the front, like started like pretty much abusing us out the front of the, the thing. Like, I don't know, I, just, I, I probably didn't help, but I just started laughing. So I just thought it was funny. I was like, dude, like we had like a sellout event. Like it was during the pandemic, which was only like... Yeah people or whatever but still it's like come on dude yeah of course we've yeah. done so much for your yeah. venue today and you're just, treating us like this that would just yeah up. and yeah. legit like they kicked us out straight after we finished so we had no chance to sell any merch and then my I god think, like a week or two later because the owner like sent us an email and was like so apologizing so for the whole thing so we, did like, they charge you to play we tried to come back to see our friend's band play two weeks later and the same guy was there. He's like, no, you don't come in. <laughs> oh, my God. They're, they're, they're yeah. actually having a really abusive security force. You know, someone is actually taking the corpse. He got beat up really badly by the security guards there. And you know, like, they're well aware of their reputation. They keep saying, oh, we're going to fire the people involved. We're going to change security force. We've done nothing to change. And now we're at the door when you went two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> oh, I thought that stopped i really thought that um security would just 
normal guys. But back in the back when I was going to see band security was steroid dudes. Yeah. They fucking, you know, hated music. Blah, blah, mm. blah. There was always people getting kicked out for moshing or for jumping off the stage. I think mean, that's crazy. Yeah. That's kind of the only venue where they're still like that. Like at Frankie's mm. Frankie's, all the security guards. Oh, are like, we Frankie's, you can yeah, dance naked if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, it was pretty odd situation yeah. for us to ever sort of have trouble with the security guards that like <laughs> you know it's like ridiculous man. situations that it's really happened yeah. and like we've played so many different venues now so it's like yeah. it's definitely an a, a odd occur- occurrence like not very common yeah um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what band it was i saw on youtube and the guitarist mm. jumped off the stage like stage dive and then he got back on the stage and security grabbed him <laughs> and threw him out. And the lead singer is going, hey, guys, I don't think you realise that he's been standing up here for the last 40 minutes. Like, fuck, he's, <laughs> you're throwing out fucking part of our band, you idiot. Oh, that's the thing. Like, it's, it's, it's so dumb, like, on, on the security, like, because, like, like that's another thing with Kelly's is that wasn't the first time we played there. We've probably played there probably yeah. five or six other times. There was always that, something you know, weird going. Like on. within a, like a two or three year period, so it wasn't like like they, we were nobodies. Like we knew the owner like pretty well, and now we're mm. never going to play there again. You know, it's like you kind of bit yourselves in the foot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So <laughs> all you punters out there, give Kelly's a miss. Boycott them. Fuck them off. Yeah, never go. Don't, again. don't go see bands there. <laughs> Fans <laughs> don't play there. You might get abused and beat up by the guards. So yeah, don't <laughs> What's the most memorable moment you guys have had on stage? Oh, um, oh. I, guess, I guess a good one was when we had our first international tour. We went to um, New Mia, New Caledonia. And wow. we played this like Oktoberfest thing they have. It was called Rocktoberfest. And I, we never would have thought that like they'd be into rock music there. They're like just a tiny French mm. colony, but they fucking loved it. And it was one of the like, Wildest crowds we've ever played to, so that was none of us speak French memory. at all. <laughs> and probably half of them didn't speak English, so it was. They, they you have no idea. I have no idea if they had any idea what we were saying. But they were <laughs> singing along. They loved they it. They seemed to like it. They we, seemed we to did, enjoy we, it. We did like a cover of "Let There Be Rock" as well, and they all got into that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well that's well, that's a straight uh, world worldwide they known. It. They love Aussie music. We also did a cover of a Jet song. Everyone knew it. Like, uh, are you going to mm. be my girl? We did, uh, are you going to be my girl? Everybody knew that song. And it was just yeah. like, you wouldn't think. <laughs> uh, hey, definitely. <laughs> um, Ryan, right. you got to talk more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I, I, I just feel Rufo cutting in. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, no. no cutting. Fuck it. I'm the one cutting in all the time. Just go hard. Well, exactly what they said. Uh, Numia was great. And then literally a couple of weeks after that, we got an opportunity to open up for um, Buck Cherry and Fozzy at the Manning Bar. So wow. that, that was pretty sick, you know? Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that was hectic. Mm-hmm. That was something memorable. Yeah, that was definitely, I think, our biggest show so far. Um, yeah. I think they ended up selling it out or whatever. It was like a 1,000 people. Or yeah. I'm not sure how many people yeah. were at the Manning Bar. Um, <laughs> I reckon, though, for me, we just recently finished up uh, the Sweet Baby Brown Eyes tour. And for the Sydney show, we had uh, my dad come up and sing because Sweet Baby Brown Eyes is a cover of one of the songs that he, him and um, um, Avalanche released in 1976. Wow. So him to come out and sing a song with us on stage and sing a cover of Nutbush uh, City Limits as well. I hope you got a recording of that. Yeah, yeah, it's up, uh, it's up on our <laughs> Facebook somewhere. Excellent. Um, but yeah, it was like the first time I've been able to sing with him on stage. And wow. Yeah, absolutely mental. Like being able mm. to see that and experience that. Like, yeah. I don't really know how to say it. Really. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's really no words you could say. That would have just been a mm. memorable moment for oh, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have you, have, have you had a worse gig, like a really, not just a Kelly's bar, have you, have you had, remember how the Sex Pistols went over to America and they did a gig in front of a bunch of fucking cowboys? Like, have you ever been on a mm. bill mm-hmm. like, like oh, that? Where, fuck. I reckon we've had like a really messy gig, like. <laughs> oh, Macquarie Arms ho- uh, Hotel. Oh, I was going to say Dapto. <laughs> yeah, that's what? true. <laughs> What's wrong with Dapto? Yeah. I threw him on the Dapto stage. 
And I was so embarrassed, I like fell off the stage. And it was just like everyone there, like including the crowd and like all the bands, everyone was pretty much drunk before we even started. And like everyone. That's was just, because it opened so early. It does, yeah. And like <laughs> people in the parking lot, like smoking, doing stuff that we probably shouldn't have been doing and doing all that sort of stuff. And we had to play last because it was mm. headlining. So it was like 11 o'clock when we went up and we were just trashed. The whole crowd was just rowdy. Like, <laughs> I threw up at one point on the stage. No, the time the got, got on someone's shoulders and like tried to play and then they both fell over and he almost fucked his guitar up and it was, it was pretty rowdy. Yeah. Um, it was a very... Like very, we haven't played fun. there again since, but I'm kind of afraid to go back in there. <laughs> yeah. My wife and I went there because we're Wollongong. We're from Wollongong. Mm -hmm. Um, we went there about three three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm in I'm on stand of the dance floor, like I'm in my late fifties, like I don't mosh. Yeah. But there and there there was this big one band couldn't turn up. They the female bass guitarist had broken ribs, so oh, they yeah. couldn't play. And I'm not going to mention the band. <clears throat> anyway, um, the last band on, I'm out the front. I'm listening to them. Top Naval are great. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Yeah. But Top Naval were playing. It was mad. And I kept getting hit, hit in the back of the head by um, half-full Jack Daniel cans. Damn, fuck. And then <clears throat> this bloke that was on the dance floor the whole time bumping into me, fucking, I ended up jumping on his back just to do a bit of payback shit. I went up to him after the gig and I said, some fuck with throwing cans. And he goes, yeah, that was me. <laughs> I, said, I said, they hit me. And he goes, yeah, I was trying to hit the band. And I thought, <laughs> I said, man, you are in a band and you're actually throwing cans at another band. I said, that is the most unethical thing that I've ever heard of in my life. And they pulled out on the interview because I said that. That's so nuts, man. Like, I've always heard about, like, people wow. throwing stuff at bands and stuff, but I've never actually seen it, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. I, if it was thrown into the crowd and, and me getting hit, I had mm. a laugh with him when he said, yeah, that was me. I went, ha, ah, ha, laugh. And then he goes, but I was aiming for the band. And as soon as he said that, I, I was just like, no, fuck off. Yeah. That is just so unethical, man. Throw cans yeah. at the crowd. Don't hit the band. Yeah, it's a bit shit. <laughs> it is, man. It's yeah. bullshit. That reminds yeah. me of that Runaways movie where they're, like, throwing shit and cans and other stuff. And they have to, like, dodge it and, like, run around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> while they're, while they're mid-beat, they're little, little, little. Oh, they're little, little. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, you've got the opportunity, right? You get to pick five bands mm -hmm. to be on a bill. What would those five bands be? And this is one for each one of you. Um, all right, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, ACDC. Uh, if Lemmy was still alive, God bless. Uh, you Motorhead. can say you can say fucking Beatles if you want, they don't have to be alive. Nah, <laughs> ACDC, Motorhead, uh, Airborne. Uh, who else would I go for? So, so many good bands. Um, probably Sabbath. Yeah, Sabbath. And yeah, probably Metallica. Okay. Yeah. Mad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd go to that gig. <laughs> <laughs> Probably say uh, ACDC, Airborne, National Pussy, they're pretty cool. Um, the Rolling Stones, maybe Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs. <laughs> That's mad. I'd go to that one as well. Um, oh, I get around like a lot more of the sort of laid back, sort of stoner rock, sort of Sabbathy stuff. So I'd love Sabbath. I'd love to put Canned Heat and Sabbath on a bill. That would be hectic, I can imagine. Just the amount of like craziness you'd go from one to the other. So I reckon that would work pretty well. There was a band that like I used to watch growing up in Queensland. So I grew up in Queensland and then we were uh, like a, a few local boys. They were called Herbo Magic. And uh, they recently broke up, or uh, I think maybe a year or two ago. But man, every single time I went and saw them play, it was just like they kind of kind of pushed me to want to keep like wanting to be in a band. You know what I mean? 
and like the, mm. the, the way everyone just reacted to them it was just like yeah they were real they were literal like local heroes there it was nuts i'd love to be able to Excellent. see them again you know um so hobo magic for sure <laughs> um pantera um was be an awesome band like with Dimebag, obviously i know they're doing stuff now but like mm. oh being able to see them with like the original lineup or at least you know shine Vinny, um phil Rex, that, that would that would be insane yeah um, definitely and oddly enough maybe the foo fighters because i remember seeing them in 2016 um for the was it 2016 it was from the sonic highways tour okay yep yep man they played for three hours straight and it was one of the best shows i think i've ever seen just the amount of energy they had throughout the whole performance they sort of came out it was just like i don't play encores we just play until we can't play anymore like that's so cool you know i appreciate it yeah no no definitely especially now that um taylor's gone rest in stuff rest in peace Mm. Mm. But uh, I heard the family they're doing stuff with the Soundgarden drama now, so that's pretty cool. Matt Cameron, yeah, that'll be sick. That'll be sick. I'm not going to say anything till she says, oh, you've said your dad. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if you had to play on a bill, who would you choose as your five bands, Matt? Um, Angels, Radiators. Oh, yeah. The vinyls, um, Master Apprentices, probably, and I don't know, maybe Split there. Ends. Split Ends, yeah, mad. Yeah. Awesome, very nice. The, the vinyls would have to be um, headlining, I'd oh, yeah. say. <laughs> God bless her. Mm. Have you? They and they started again. And the girl that they've got playing singer, that's singing for them now, she tried like ah, what's his name? Fucking dickhead that's singing for um in excess now. She's fucking in excess. Had a singer now. Hey, yeah, I wasn't aware. Yeah, I wasn't no, aware of that. The, the guy from Noise Works. Really? Oh, wow. He okay. sings for fucking in excess now. Oh, it's, yeah. Is this kind of like what Queen are doing with Adam wow. Lambert? Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about that either. I was like, I don't know. Like, uh, it'd be great to see able to see Queen again, but they're not really doing anything new, are they? They're just doing old stuff. Exactly. And and but the in excess with this guy, I fucking can't remember his name. He's in Noiseworks anyway. He was a singer for Noiseworks. Mm. They're doing they're doing new shit. But with this new girl doing the divinals, she's she's just acting slutty, you know, like or just trying to be like Chrissy was. And Chrissy wasn't acting slutty; that was just Chrissy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But this Mm -hmm. this new vocalist for the divinals, it's it's sad. Mm. It's quite sad. Such a hard thing to do, you know. It's like, how are you going to be able to? Someone's fill shoes. someone's shoes that have like been at yeah in that oh it would it definitely that, would you know yeah you, yeah you can't i don't know it'd be such like a hard position I feel like you just kind of have to do your own thing like dave gleason with the angels yeah. for sure yeah 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 like exactly but he's he's he 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 doesn't try to be like doc mm. yeah you that's know true. what i mean that's true. This, yeah. He does it, and he doesn't even do it in a screaming jets way either. Yeah, like it's like a totally new band. It's like a new band. Yeah. It's it's not the Angels. It's not Screaming Jets. It's a new band. Sure, they do Angel songs. Of course, yeah. you wouldn't go to an Angels gig and and not listen to Angel songs. But <clears throat> Dave Gleason, he doesn't. Try to be like dog. This this chick, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I I wasn't happy at all. That's for doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just shocked that you said that like, in excess is still going. I didn't even yeah, know that's what I was just that. saying. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with um, yeah, the guy from Noise. I'm fucking. I can't believe it. Who's the guy from Noiseworks? 
No, you're gonna ignore me anyway. What am I asking? Um, <laughs> so, so what's in the future for you guys? What are you What are you hoping to happen? Um, Is there a future? Are you like obviously your work and shit? We're, we're yeah. Yeah. This. <laughs> we just kind of completed a headline tour of uh, Australia for our new single "Sweet Go Down Eyes," so we're still pushing that. If if you want to check that out, the video, the, the, the <laughs> And all that. Um, but yeah, coming up, we're joining the poor on their album launch shows when they come to Sydney and the Central Coast. Yeah, so I, I can't that's... believe they're still around. No, 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 no. I think they just finished touring you. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Why? How can people like them? <laughs> I have no idea. I saw him in a parking lot in, in um, Woodridge in Brisbane area, mm. in a parking lot, and it was. I don't know why people like that band. I just have no idea. But yeah, keep going. Sorry. I just yeah, had to. We're, <laughs> we're opening up for them May 26th and 27th at the Bridge Hotel in Sydney and at, um, Ocean View Hotel in Central Coast. It's Ocean View Cafe. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ocean View something. Ocean View. <laughs> and then, yeah, then after that, we're actually going to Brisbane to play Moondoll Festival on June 3rd. That's like... Mad. I'm <laughs> Kathleen Turner Overdrive. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. That, that band's playing. There's a lot of people playing on that one. So, yeah. mm. and um, I think Piston Fist are playing them, and just recently announced that they're playing on that um, World is a Vampire tour with uh, Special punk. Pumpkins. So, yeah, it's it's, yeah. What we were saying before, like, there's a lot of punk bands and metal bands and rock bands on that bill, so it's going to be pretty cool. I think. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's I, I. That's what I love. Like, I they had a thing. I think it was '92. Um, alternative Nation, look it up. Mm. It had bands like L7, Lou Reed, Body Count, Chili Peppers, Faith No More, um, fucking The Rolling Span, Jale Biafra did a spoken word, Henry Rollins did a spoken word. It was like every genre, L7, every genre of music over mm. the whole weekend. It was. Oh, wow. And that should be more of them, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's like I'm back 20 something years. Wow. Yeah, Moondog, is that like a two day thing, I think? No, yeah, just... so it's a weekend thing, yeah. It's a one day thing. Oh, awesome. But yeah. Is that the first? Have, have you been, have you played at many festivals? Uh, um, yeah, we've played a few. We've played Thrashville last year. That was pretty cool in um, like. Hunter Valley. Yeah, Hunter Valley. And yeah, we played that Rocktoberfest one in Emea, which is pretty cool. What else? I think mm. we've we played a couple others. With we like, did our own one like yeah, we did. three years ago, the Outlinch Rock Fest, which was, I guess, in a way, a festival. Like we just set up our own thing like that, where we mm. had, uh, I think like it was Coffin bands. were headlining. Yeah. Wow. Um, a few other things underneath them we played as well. And um, yeah, it was pretty good. It was a crowbar for like the whole day. And um, we had a lot of punk bands on that one too. It was just kind of all our mates at the time that we jumped on the yeah. And yeah, we also played a couple of festivals um, with Silverback Touring, and I think the Paul were on a few of those ones as well. That's right, right. the Aussie League festivals. Yeah. We we have we have a few more festivals coming up too that I'm not too sure if we can announce yet, but we do have a couple more coming up as well. So mm. just on our like social website and all that, and they'll be announced soon. Excellent. Have you got any one of you got kids? Uh, I'll get uh, yeah, I do actually. I have a kid. Hang on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> There's my son. He's a good boy. Yeah, <laughs> I hope you treat him well. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say you say you had kids. Mm. Would you let them listen to your music? Um, of course. They can listen to anything they want. Just not Justin Bieber. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so stoked, mate. We I had to buy my daughter's two youngest ones Bieber tickets and fucking <laughs> I had to go I had to go so I could so they wouldn't just sit there in their seat I wanted to get them up the front so mm -hmm. I had to go and he pulled out I'm so stoked <laughs> he's not doing the show too I went oh babies he's not coming home I'm sorry <laughs> I, got so stoked. I went my mum took me to see Kiss in 1980 Mm. I had to wear earphones, earmuffs. I had to have these earplugs in my ear. And 
the Justin Bieber show would have been the second time I've ever seen a gig with yeah. earplugs in my ear. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, mate, I was so stoked. And now they, they now we've got to go see this band, uh, band, fucking group, The Weekend. I don't know if you've oh, ever yeah. heard of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah, got to do that now, so. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. I'm happy. Mm. It's funny, but one of like the 13 year old, she loves her punk music. She like she loves all the music I listen to. She digs it, and she mm. loves. Like I went and saw the Angels. Be she was four, I think. Yeah, it was before. It was just near the end of Doc, and mm. she was on my shoulder, and. Near the end of the song, she was saying, "No way, get fucked, fuck off." <laughs> and like that, near the end of the song, like she'd obviously heard it for about five, yeah. five minutes because it was, mm. and it was yeah. That's so so yeah, you let your kids hear your music. That's mad. Well, sure. So you, there's not too much aggression and hate in your vocals. No, <laughs> really. No. I mean, like at the end of the day, like we're just. The same, like we we kind of push just like feel good rock and roll like having a party, having a good mm. time, forgetting we're, about your worries you know throughout not, the rest of the week. Yeah, we're not we don't generally try to yeah like do anything political or anything to like thought provoking. <laughs> it's generally just let's all drink and have fun. <laughs> that's that, that's all music's about, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel bad lecturing people myself, you know, because I feel like I don't know anything myself. <laughs> nah, it sounds like you do. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the only thing, I think the only political band that really stands out, but as a good political band, is probably like uh, Midnight Oil. You know, yeah, Very good. but he fucked up. Yeah. He, he was he was he went from left to right, really, didn't he? Oh, really? Like he fucking as soon as. As soon as he became a politician, mm. everything he sang about just went down the toilet. Yeah, All right. Done for like uh, taking bribes or some shit mm. from the gaming commission or whatever. It was like, dude. Oh, really? That's the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just stopped. Well. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's another problem with like political stuff is it, it can become dated very easily as well. Yes, yes, very like, easily. You, know, you listen to like ACDC and it's like, like the song Big Balls is still funny, as funny as it, as it was back then as it is today. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, it doesn't matter when you listen to it, it's just a funny song, it's a good song. <laughs> it's, what I've noticed a lot now and a lot uh, in metal as well, but in a lot of the punk, their songs are, are these days are a lot about anti-racism, yeah. anti-fascist, anti-socialism, fucking anti-pedophile. Mm. You know what I mean? Like mm. it, it, it's just anti, anti, anti. And yeah, I, like, I went to the Dapto Diamond Dogs and there was four bands on. And before each band started, they said, oh, any fucking... Pell fans out there will meet you in the fucking um, parking lot after the show. Any of you racist cunts will fucking, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, sing it in your songs. Don't like, we all, we all know that we're not supposed to be racist, prejudiced, fucking mm -hmm. sexist, mm -hmm. pedophilic. <laughs> you know, it, it's, thing, it's like, become a statement that's starting to get boring yeah, it's for like, me anyway. People like almost want to become preachers or something, you know, and it's like, stop preaching to me. Like, just play music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get that. Like, I, that's one of the reasons I feel like I don't want to do it as well as I feel like I, I don't want to preach to anyone, you know, like I don't want anyone to feel like I'm trying to get my ideas into your head as much as as say like what i believe or whatever and like that's definitely how it can come across like even one of my favorite bands that is political like rage against machine like i love it yeah. even they can get really cringy with it you know <laughs> like i love all their songs but even like they can get a little bit to the point where you're like dude just shut up <laughs> hey, hey. did you know that his uncle was one of the um black panthers 
Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. His uncle, I, I think it was um, <clears throat> fucking, I don't know, vice president or so second in charge or, or yeah. something. Go on YouTube and, and type in um, uh, fucking Rage Against the Machine first gig. Yeah. And some bloke had the fucking brains to tape this gig. Yeah. My microphone stands fucking falling over on me. Here we go. Um, some bloke had the fucking brains to record Rage Against the Machine. There was 20 people in the crowd. I think I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in first. a park. Yep, yeah, I've seen and that. The, the, yeah, the intro was the start of Killing in the Name of. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they didn't play Killing in the Name of. It yeah. began, it was started off just as an intro. Yeah. And it was like, fuck, who had to, wow, someone actually filmed. Filmed, yeah. Fucking oh, Rage Against the Machine, their first ever fucking live performance. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's great, mate. Um, yeah. do you guys like document a lot of your gigs or you know, yeah. do you do little documentaries? Yeah, I kind of do. Um Ryan's dad comes to all our gigs and he does everything on a little GoPro just kind of for himself, just to remember it by. So occasionally mm. we'll use clips of that and we'll try to Actually, we'll get, like, or other people yeah, and it's always, uh, we always like to record um, our shows too, just to see what we can work on, what we can build on for the next show, and how we can exactly. improve it, you know? Yeah, well, yes, exactly. Things, like, um, I was thinking the other day, like, we start, like, recording more stuff that we do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people tend to just, like, come here, come here, come <laughs> and we've actually got a pretty decent setup with GoPros, so like, yeah. Precious. It's a lot of people have got drones too now, so you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. we actually we managed to get a drone um, camera for the Sweet Baby video, and um, some of those um, shots that we got uh, drone footage, and it just looks awesome. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. I heard of festivals and that you need to have a license or yeah. something to, to to film. Really? Oh wow! I think yeah, supposedly that. like a license to film by drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. that's that's just something I heard. Um, do you guys do covers? Oh, uh, every now and then, like we try, we we're trying to stick mostly to originals, but um, we we do chuck in and cover it. We also usually do at least do at the beer off in most of our set lists. Yeah, it's pretty much been a staple yeah. in our set list. <laughs> we find everyone gets play. Yeah. It's like a, one of our favorite cover songs to play for sure. Because mm. listening to your music, I reckon you do a mad version of Black and Blue. Yeah. Yeah. If you've heard that song, Black and Black Blue. and Blue by who? Um. Oh, now you made me fucking <laughs> chain. I'm gonna chain. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's probably one of the best songs that could be played. It's a blues song. It's like it's a it's about him in jail, but it's a blues song. But I, I I I've been waiting. I've been asking. I've been every time I talk to a band, I said do on one of your records or something, just do black and blue. I, I mean, it is that song that needs to be made heavier. Yeah. Mm. Like, it's brilliant. It's brilliant blues. Yeah. Mm. Heavier, it would just kick fucking ass, man. Well, honestly, that's kind of what we do. Like, all of our cover songs have been, like, with, I mean, apart from that they be rock, have been some sort of, like, older classic blues or, like, sort of song. We've done Johnny Be Good. Where we sort of try to amp that up, make that like Not more of a Bush. hard rock song. Not Bush, City Limits, yeah, same thing. It's Christmas single, Sweet Baby Brown, the cover of his dad Avalanche song. Yeah, which is more of a classic rock song, and we yeah. amp that up and make it a hard rock song. So that's kind of our mo. So we might actually have a look at that. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny how you literally said um cover of the song called Black and Blue because we've literally got a working title for one of our. It's not set in stone yet for our songs called Black and Blue. Yeah, it's a working title. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> so when it goes on the album, just 
when it says when you write black and blue, just put in in little things, but it's Matt, not the yeah. chain version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Matt Taylor, didn't mean to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the name. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, ah, because you, yeah, you told me you 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 had to go back to work, so I didn't um write down the usual questions so i usually ask people so mm -hmm. now now i've got to start thinking um <laughs> so you you tell me when you need to go to work and we'll fucking we'll hook it up and finish about a couple of minutes is, is that all right yeah 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 okay couple of minutes yeah, Have, sure. what when you were first starting in a band what um did you get any advice from older bands telling you anything any uh, advice yeah um i reckon uh -huh. probably one of the best advice was probably from my dad when we when I, we first sort of started and we were just sort of talking about like nerves and stage fright and stuff like that mm. and he just sort of said to me he's like look at the end of the day like the reason you're up on the stage is because you've got something to show and um and you just got to show it because at the end of the day you know um if you show what you've got like everyone there is actually sort of in awe of it especially if you know what you're doing so there's no reason really to be afraid of that you've just got to get up there and show what you've got and yeah. i don't know weirdly enough that sort of like we should tweak something in my head because like I, it was very hard for me to begin with like getting very nervous and very like feeling like i shouldn't be there or whatever um and 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 i think that's that's really what it was just like a confidence boost of just like just get over that and just realize that you've got something, you know? Um, I think that was one of the most important advices for me, like performance wise, like playing in front of people, because that's just something you don't really think about, you know, especially starting a band, just playing in the bedroom and then going oh, definitely. to all of a sudden playing in front of even just 20 or 30 people. Um, were, you, were you one of those people, because I was, that used to play the tennis racket? Oh, like an air guitar. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, because I, like, I, I don't play. I, I'm a fucking untalented person in the music scene. That's why I last 30 years I've been a roadie for fucking that many bands. And I've set up fucking, I've, yeah, I'm untalented. I can't even sing punk-wise. And, you know, how can you not sing punk? Like, ah. yeah, mate, we're mate, we're a rock band. We can only count to four anyway, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no fucking. I just forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> about you not being talented. <laughs> yeah, me not being talented. But when I was a kid, I just didn't hold the the um the tennis racket. I actually moved my hand. Yeah. Mm. Kind of thing. Like, mm. and this is like when I was a kid, this is like, like the most metalist band that, that I was listening to would have probably been the Angels, the Divinals, um, yeah, fucking Mouse's Apprentices, yeah. Midnight mm. Oil when they were first starting up. Mm. But you know what I mean? And but mm. I, I used to move my hand. Mm. And I like, I, I, you know, I've, I've asked a lot of people and they just, yeah, I, I just used to hold it. And <laughs> then it's strong. You know, like, I, I had that, I had that actual thing. I could move my hand. All right. So <clears throat> is the advice you got, is there anything that you could add to that? Well, yeah. For like bands that. that are starting up, have you got any advice you can give? Yeah, for to, sure. To bands? I reckon, like, like I was saying, like, at the end of the day, the main thing that I was trying to push forward is just, like, confidence because I feel like I feel like a lot of people just aren't confident enough, especially when they get up on stage, and it's just such an important thing. Like, you really don't realise how important confidence is. Like, you can be playing 100% note-perfect things, but if you're just, like, you know, curled up and, you know, not really mm -hmm. to watch... It's just yeah. such a difference as compared to someone like going up and just going nuts and just yeah. having time while doing it, you know? Definitely. It's like really the biggest piece of advice was just not getting in your own head and like freezing or like, you know, thinking that you're not, 
you're not supposed to be there. Like that that was really the biggest thing. But yeah. you know, nervous energy is like part of it, you know, like yeah. I, I think I think like apart from that, like business side or music wise, I would say the most important thing is to get like a song, one song, something recorded, and then like really focus on promoting that and then just seeing where that can go. Cause if you can get gigs mm -hmm. from that, then that can help push. And then eventually you can go and, you know, once you get enough money, go and do another song and then that'll end up pushing. Like, I think, I think a big thing for bands, especially when they first start is like, they don't really know how to promote themselves, mm. how to get their music out there. They don't know yeah. how to shows and that's I mean, we're still figuring it out yeah, we're, we're, just, still figuring out. we're just trying a bunch of things seeing what what are seeing what doesn't but I, as long as you're trying as hard as you can i would yeah. say those are the two most critical things is confidence and being able to promote yourself do um, you think do you think the there is a thing overconfident oh yes <laughs> oh for sure we've met so many bands that take their confidence to a level where they think they're king shit and it's I like, think, dude, calm down. Is, I think the thing is, you got to be confident on stage when you're playing, yeah. but not anywhere else. That's it. Yeah, you've yeah. got a rock star on stage, but nowhere else. You know. Yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah. Um, I think people definitely take that rock star energy in and try everywhere. to live it, and it's it's not livable. You can't live like that. <laughs> you know what pisses me off is a band. They're okay. They're playing first. Say, they start. They play their gig, and then they leave. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that is just fucking disgusting. Or, yeah. Yeah. or the band that's headlining yeah. turns up just before they're supposed to play. Yeah. And is not there for the first three <laughs> bands. Yeah. We've had both have Look, it, it is so unfortunate because, look, at the end of the day, one of the biggest things, especially playing local gigs, is supporting each other. Yeah, if you don't sure. support yeah. each other, it makes it so much harder. <laughs> like, and like, you really like, you think about it. Like, if there was four bands on a bill, even if only four, like, if and there was four people in each band, even if one person could get five or ten people to come to a gig, that would fill yep. the whole room. You know exactly. Um, yeah. Look, like there isn't, there maybe isn't always going to be that case, but like there's just so much more that people can do in those situations that they don't really end up doing. You know. No. And support no. is such a big thing. You don't really want to be that band that goes in and plays, especially when you're like headlining, or even if you're opening up, play your set, pack up, leave, and then yeah. everyone leaves with a bad taste. You know, like oh, well, that band mm -hmm. just. And don't throw back cans of fucking Jack Daniels at the band that's playing after you. I mean, if I asked for it, if someone threw this at me, I'd be happy because I would want to Yeah, drink. I'd be happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm yeah. glad one of you is a fucking drinking. Oh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I started, I think I started uh, the party without you guys a bit too early because the bottle's half empty. So <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Do you have to go to work? Are you working today? Yeah, I don't know. Who, Steve or me? You. Me? Uh, I've got to go out somewhere, not for work, but I'm working in a couple of days. But, yeah, I have Excellent. to go out soon. Have you yeah. guys got an album coming out or anything? Um, we're oh, working yeah. towards it. We actually just did, like, a demo session for a bunch of songs that we're going to record pretty soon. We're still kind of figuring out how we want to do it, if we want to just do them as singles or EP or album. Mm. Or exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it might make well, good sense to sort of just do a few singles and then lead up to it. And, um, yeah. Two singles. Uh, well, yeah. when, whenever you got something coming out, give me a yell, because I've also got an offshoot of this show where I do album reviews. Yep. Wow. And that'd be great to have you on that. That'd be excellent. Yes. Oh. So stoked to have you guys. Thank you for taking up the uh, I really, really am fucking blessed. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Enjoy working while I finish drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very, very much. And I really appreciate it. And check out, check out the album reviews. We'll do. I only go for a half an hour and sure. yeah, when, you, when you're about to put something out, give me a buzz. This room is loud.